What's going on guys welcome back in today's video we're going to learn how to analyze stock correlations in python we're going to take individual stocks and compare the price movements and plot a correlation heat map as an overview today so in order to do that we're going to need a couple of libraries and for that we open up the terminal of our choice on windows usually cmd on linux and mac the terminal and we type pip or pip3 depending on the operating system install and we're going to need four libraries called matplotlib seaborn pandas and pandas dash data reader. Now matplotlib is the basic library for plotting. Seaborn is a wrapper for or off matplotlib you could say so making it easier to use matplotlib. This is what we're actually going to use in order to plot the heat map. Pandas is for dealing with data frames and the pandas data reader is what we're going to use in order to get the financial data from the Yahoo Finance API. So you can press enter and install all this. In my case it's already installed so it's just going to say requirement already satisfied. Uh, in your case, it's going to do the installation. So once you have that, you need to import these things as well. So we're going to start by importing pandas underscore data reader as web. We're going to import pandas as PD. We're going to import matplotlib dot pyplot as PLT. And we're going to import seaborn as SNS. By the way, these are not arbitrary, uh, arbitrary aliases. Those are actually the best practice recommended aliases. So you use those usually in the documentation it's used. So SNS for Seaborn, PLT for Pyplot for Matplotlib, PD for Pandas and Web for Pandas Data Reader. And the first thing we want to do is we want to define a time frame. So we want to look at a certain time frame. And of course, when we choose the, the stocks to look at, we need to make sure that all these stocks exist in the time frame. So for example, if I want to look for the last uh, 50 years, I'm not going to use Spotify because it's not, uh, it's not present in the stock market uh, for the last 50 years. So we want to pick a time frame that allows us to analyze all the stocks. So all these stocks have to be public. All the companies have to be public already in that time frame. And I'm just going to pick a two year time frame here or actually Oh, now it's already a four year time time frame. Time passes fast. So start is DT. Oh, by the way, we need to import date time. So import date time as DT and date time is a core Python module. So you don't need to install anything here. Uh, but you type DT dot date time and then basically the year, for example, let's go with 2018. And we'll go with the first of 2018 and the end is basically today. So DT daytime dot now. This is the time frame, the 1st of January 2018 up until today. And we're going to compare a couple of stocks in that time frame. So we're going to go ahead and define the tickers. Now, if you don't know what the stock tickers are, you can just Google. You can type, for example, something like Facebook uh, stock ticker or or ticker symbol. Or you can type something like Goldman Sachs ticker symbol. Um, and once you have those, you just enter them here. And for Facebook, for example, it's FB. For Goldman Sachs, it's S uh, GS. For uh, NVIDIA, it's NVDA. For Microsoft, it's MF, uh, MSFT. For Tesla, it's TSLA. For uh, what can we look at here? Let's go with AAPL for Apple. Maybe with CCL for Carnival Cruise Line. Um, and last but not least, maybe, I don't know, BO for or was it BA Boeing? I'm not sure. I think it was BA. Um, those are the companies that we're going to compare. For example, you can pick whatever you want. Just make sure that all these companies exist in that time frame uh, or are public in that time frame. Uh, otherwise, you're going to get some errors here. And we're going to define an empty list with the column names because what we want to do is we want to load the individual data frames. When we load these data frames from the Yahoo Finance API, we're going to get a data frame for Facebook, for example, or for Meta in that time frame and uh, we're going to get adjusted close we're going to get close open high low and so on volume we only want to have the adjusted close price which is the price at the end of the day adjusted to stock splits so for example if a company splits the stock the price changes but it's actually the same price um, this is taken into consideration here and we want to take only that and put it into a new data frame with uh, the respective ticker as the column name and this is why we need to store the column names here um, and what we're going to do is we're going to say for the ticker symbol in tickers, 
we're going to do the following thing. We're going to say the data for this particular stock price is web.data reader and we pass the ticker here as the first parameter, the string Yahoo to specify that we want to look at the Yahoo Finance API for the data and a start and end date to define the time frame. So this is the data. And then we can say, okay, if the length of the column names is zero, we're in the first iteration here. So we need to create the data frame. And if it's not zero, we already have a data frame and we just need to merge or to join basically. So if it's the first time, what we do is we say combined. So the final data frame is essentially data uh, that we get here adjusted. Oh, I think I triggered the insertion mode here. Um, or actually not the insertion mode, the opposite of that. Uh, the adjusted close price is what we're looking for here, the data. Um, and we're not just taking that, we're making a copy from that because we want to have uh, not a reference, we want to have an actual new data frame. So we copy the data frame consisting of only the adjusted close and we put it to combine. Now, of course, in order to know what this adjusted close price belongs to, we're going to also have to uh, append something to the column name. So we're going to say column names dot append the respective ticker symbol here so that we know, okay, uh, we added this ticker already to the data frame to the combined data frame. And now what we do is we say combined dot columns equals call names. And by doing that, we always have um, like in this case, because it's the first iteration here, we add the close price of the first company in this case, Facebook, and uh, we create the first data frame. So the new data frame with only one column, we change the column name from adjusted close to FB. And then next time what we're going to do. So if the column name length is not zero, we already have some data there, we're just going to join to the existing data frame. So we're going to say combined equals combined dot join and we're going to join the adjusted close of the data. So this data here is not the same as this data because this is only for the first iteration. And next time we have GS so Goldman Sachs. And in this case, we just join to the existing data frame that we created here, the close price of Goldman Sachs. And then again, of course, what we do is we say call names dot append ticker and then combine columns equals call names. And by the way, I think we can simplify that. Let's just take this and put it there. Because the only difference here are those two statements. And then we do that anyway. So um, this should work. That's that. And essentially, we now have the data, we can actually go ahead and just print this. So print the combined data frame here in order to see what this looks like. And then you're going to see that we have crafted a data frame where the ticker symbol is the column and then we have the close price for the individual dates. Uh, and we have that for all the companies. Now it's going to take some time because we need to query the Yahoo Finance API. But you can see what happens here. We have Facebook, Goldman Sachs, a couple of uh, columns in between then CCL and BA. So Carnival and Boeing. And we have the stock prices, the adjusted close prices for the individual dates here, uh, which the data is the uh, index and then we have the data here. Uh, so this is actually what we want. And now we can use that first of all, to just display the movements. And then we can also plot a correlation heat map. Um, so let's start with a simple plot here, just a line chart indicating the price movements uh, without any correlation yet. So PLT, um, actually, we're going to set first of all, the scale to logarithmic, because we don't want to or actually, let me show you what this looks like without a logarithmic scale first. Uh, we're going to say for ticker in tickers, we're going to plot. So plt dot plot from the combined data frame, the ticker symbol, and the label is going to be the ticker itself. And of course, we need a legend to know which one is which one. So plt legend location is going to be upper left, or let's go with right. Um, and then we just say plt show. So this is just going to show us the price, mo uh, price movements. But since we don't have a logarithmic scale, this is going to be quite, uh, let's say it's quite ugly, because the problem is that some stocks have a way higher price than others. So we can see here, uh, this is not really a comparison of the movements here, we don't see the movements compared, we just see the price compared also the movements, of course, but for example, this stock here, what is it CCL uh, has a quite low price per share. And because of that, we don't see the fluctuations as well here. Uh, or too well here. Whereas uh, I think this is Tesla, here we see a lot of fluctuations because the price is quite high. Now, 
if we want to look at the relative gains, all we need to do is we need to say plt dot y scale and we pass lock here as a parameter. And this shows us then the logarithmic change. So um, not an absolute values necessarily, but but more like uh, relative gains to the stock price task. So we're going to have everything a little bit more um, more similar here. And you can see here Carnival Cruise Line, which was almost a straight line before, is now quite fluctuating. And you can see here that we have 10 to the power of 1, 10 to the power of 2, 10 to the power of 3. And it's uh, way easier to see the relative performance here. However, we wanted to see a correlation heat map. And for that, uh, we need to use Seaborn, or it's easier to use Seaborn. So we're going to actually comment this out here. And we're going to say that the combined data frame is now going to be another data frame. We're going to say that the combined data frame is or actually let's store it in a new data frame. The correlation data is going to be the combined data frame. And now we want not the absolute values, we want to have the percentage change. So for each value, we want to know, okay, what's the change to the previous value um, of that column. So we're going to say PCT change pandas has a function that does that already. And actually, before we do anything else, we can print that so that you can see what what this looks like before we move on. And essentially now, uh, now this is not a correlation data yet, this is just percentage change. Uh, but we're going to add one more function in the end. And this is going to make this a correlation map or a correlation ma uh, matrix. But in this case, uh, we're going to see that we don't have now actual prices here, we just have the price movement. So you can see, okay, from this date to this date, the stock price changed that much relative. So those are our percentage values. So 1%, 3%, and so on and so forth. Uh, those are not actual stock prices. And now what we want to know is what is the correlation between all these individual features between all these individual columns between all these individual companies. So combined percentage change, uh, dot correlation and the method that we're going to use is the simple Pearson correlation here. And now we have the correlation data, I'm not going to plot this again here. Uh, instead of plotting it, we're going to use SNS. So Seaborn to plot a heat map based on that correlation data. So SNS dot heat map, and we're passing the correlation data here as the data frame, we're going to set annotation to true. And the color map, you can go with a default map, you can go with I think one that I like using is yellow, green, blue, like that. But I think here it makes more sense to use cool, warm because uh, yeah, I think this is quite intuitive, you know, the warmer something is the more correlation you have there. And the cooler something is the less uh, correlation you have there, or maybe a negative correlation uh, you have there. Uh, and this is quite, quite intuitive, I think. And now we're just going to say PLT show. And this is going to give us the, uh, the correlation heat map from Seaborn. Always take some time because we need to load the data from the Yahoo Finance API. And the more tickets you have, the longer it's going to take. But here you can see what the result looks like. You basically have, uh, okay, this is too much. You basically have the individual stocks here. So FB and FB have a correlation of one, GS and GS have a correlation of one. So on the diagonal, you can see the stocks correlating with themselves, obviously one because one means if stock A rises, stock B rises exactly the same. And of course, if it's the same stock, this is going to be one. And then we have some correlation, uh, basically, a meaningless correlation would be zero, because zero is like completely random, it doesn't really matter what happens with stock A, uh, in regard to stock B, and negative one would be a negative correlation. So for example, if stock A rises, stock B falls every time, uh, like completely the opposite. And in this case, the stocks that we chose here only uh, have positive correlations. Now something like 0 0.3 is not really strongly correlated. However, something like uh, 0.76 is a pretty high correlation here, you can see the warmer it gets, uh, the more correlations you have, or the higher the correlation is. And you can see, for example, Apple and Microsoft are highly correlated, Microsoft and Nvidia are, are highly correlated, then maybe Facebook and Microsoft to some degree. And we can play a uh, play around with different stock tickers, for example, um, maybe something like Nvidia, and AMD. I'm not sure if they are going to be negatively correlated or positively correlated, because you could argue, if Nvidia is doing well, that's bad for AMD, if an AMD is doing uh, well, that's bad for Nvidia. 
but then again, they're in the same sector, so you can't really say that. Uh, but you can see that they have a decent correlation of 0 0.67. But all in all, you can argue that when stock prices move up, in general, the market moves up with some exceptions, of course. Um, by the way, none of this is financial advice. This is just programming advice for analyzing data sets and visualizing data sets. Uh, but this is what you can do with a tool like that. You just enter a couple of stock tickers. Of course, you can Google them. Uh, and you can, you can, if you're interested in some companies, you just research them and you want to see the correlation. Okay, how much does Tesla rise when Nvidia rises? And you can do the same with cryptocurrency. You can introduce Bitcoin, you can introduce Ethereum and so on. Um, everything that the Yahoo Finance API offers, you can compare it, you can plot a correlation heat map. And this is how you do that in Python. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.